Okay. Uh, this morning, we will go back again into the Old Testament and see what the Lord uh, has in store for us this morning. The Lord wants to teach us through His vessel. And uh, let us prepare our heart this morning as we listen to the Word of God. Um, so may I request you to turn your Bible this morning with me to the book of Amos. Amos is before Obadiah and Amos is after Joel. Now these are the books, it's known as minor prophets. Um, not because they are small prophets, it's because the books are smaller. After Daniel is Uzziah, and then after Uzziah is Joel, and then is Amos. So what I would expect you to do th this morning is take your Bible to Amos chapter 8 and Uzziah chapter 4. Amos chapter 8 and Uzziah chapter 4 as we listen to the word of God. May I read for you? And as we read, uh, may I request you to please stand to honor the word of God in Amos chapter 8 and Uzziah chapter 4. Amos chapter 8 and Uzziah chapter 4. I'm reading Amos chapter 8 first. Verse number 11. The Bible says, Behold, the days come, saith the Lord God, that I will send a famine in the land, n not a famine of bread, <coughs> sorry, nor a thirst for water, but of hearing the words of the Lord. I will also read verse 12, 13 and 14. And they shall wander from sea to sea, and from the north even to the east. They shall run to and fro to seek the word of the Lord and shall not find it. In that day shall the fair virgins and young men faint for thirst. They that swear by the sin of Samaria and say, Thy God, O Dan, liveth, and the manner of Beersheba liveth, even they shall fall and never Rise up again. Uh, one more time I like to read verse number 11. Behold the days come, saith the Lord God, that I will send a famine in the land, not a famine of bread, nor a thirst for water, but of hearing the words of the Lord. Could you please turn to Isaiah chapter 4, verse number 6. Uzziah chapter 4, verse number 6, the Bible says, My people, referring to the people of Israel, My people are destroyed for lack of knowledge, because thou hast rejected knowledge. I will also reject thee, that thou shalt be no priest to me, seeing thou hast forgotten the law of thy God, I will also forget thy children. Shall we look to the Lord in prayer this morning? Our dearest loving Heavenly Father, this morning we thank you for thy word. We have enjoyed worshipping you uh, through singing and praises and we are trusting that thou art receiving our worship. Even as we continue to worship you through the preaching of thy word, speak to our hearts today, O God. And may we apply the truth to our life. And we, may we uh, become more like Jesus Christ in our thoughts, in our desires, in our passion. And in everything, may we be like Jesus Christ, O God. And Father, I pray that thou will cover me behind thy cross. Fill me with thy Holy Spirit, so that Jesus Christ alone be magnified and be exalted and be glorified this morning. Thank you for listening to our prayers. In the sweetest name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, we pray. Amen. You may be seated. As we read this chapter from Amos chapter 8 and Hosea chapter 4, 
I want to remind you that this passage is clearly uh, written to the people of Israel. Clearly to the people of Israel. Now, uh, when we study the Bible, there are things that we need to keep in mind. That not all things are written to us, but all things are written for us. Amen? All things are written for us. And so... Uh, we are not supposed to be a Christian who will uh, pick and choose what we want. We got to be Christian who will take everything what the Bible says by faith and apply it to our life. For all things were written for our admonition, for our learning, even in the Old Testament and the New Testament. If I'm too loud, I think the volume should be brought a little bit lower. I guess I'm too loud. Um, so... Uh, this is an interpret one interpretation we must understand when we study the Bible, when, when you preach or when we study. There's one interpretation in every passage of the Bible has just one interpretation, but it has many applications. That's why some of the passage may be particularly just for the people of Israel or just for an individual as Timothy, but it is all applicable for us. Amen? And so we are going to take application from these two verses, a couple of verses that we read. And uh, as we read, as I was studying this, one thing that popped up that is similar, what is happening in this day and age. And I'm not looking at the world, I'm looking at the church while I study this chapter uh, in this both, both this uh, book of Minor Prophets. And I see there is a famine in the church. I see the famine in the church. While just we, were, we are thinking everything is going on well, everything is comfortable, all is looking beautiful, and there's wonderful things going on. The meetings are growing, the numbers are growing, and there's a lot of things that's happening among Christianity. We have taken it for granted, thinking the church is fine, while God says there is a famine in the church. God says your church is lukewarm. And uh, I'm not trying to say that maybe this church is, uh, uh, is in famine. As a pastor, I don't like to think in that manner. I don't like to think in that way. But sometimes I guess it's good to think there might be a famine in our church. That perhaps will wake us up and perhaps will get us on our knees. And perhaps our eyes will be on Christ. So we can not be lukewarm, but rather be hot for the Lord. It's not wrong to consider ourselves as lukewarm if that will make us to repent of our sin and get us on our knees before God so that we can be just like as we were. Do you remember the day that you were born again? And then do you remember the weeks thereafter and the months thereafter and a year thereafter? How passionate you were for God. How committed you were for God. Totally surrendered for the cause of Christ. And as Paul says in 2 Corinthians, Corinthians, uh, uh, 1 Corinthians chapter 2, verse number 2. I determined to know nothing but save Christ and Him crucified. You know, that was our motto when we first got saved. I don't want to know about anybody. I don't want to know about this problem. I don't want to know about this person. All that I'm no, I want to know is, I am totally determined. I am totally committed only to know about the Lord Jesus Christ. And we went on that direction. We focused on the Lord Jesus Christ. Pressing towards the mark. Forgetting all that is behind. We were focusing on the Lord Jesus Christ. That's exactly what happened to the life of Peter. Peter focused upon Jesus Christ. While he saw Jesus walking on the water. While the apostles said, oh it's a ghost. And Jesus says, fear not, it is I. And Peter said, Lord, if it is you, then make me walk on the water. You know what Peter did? Peter walked by faith. He put his faith on Jesus. He looked upon Jesus. And Jesus said, come out. And Peter got out of the boat. Right in the, in the, in the water with the waves and everything. Peter walked on the water. Amen. And then. While he focused on Christ. He was walking on the water. And then come at the test. I'll tell you dear friend. True faith. And true love. 
will always be tested. True faith and true love will always be tested. Don't you ever come to a position or a place where you think, now everything is fine with me. God has tested me and I proved myself. Now everything is going to be well. I'm going to be slipping on the bed of roses. Life is going to be beautiful. That's not going to be beautiful. If you truly love Christ, you will come under test over and over and over again until you are raptured or go to the grave. Your desire this morning ought to change. Your desire ought to be like Apostle Paul. For I determine to know nothing save Christ and Him crucified. Paul Had the same thing. He kept the same thing. He finished the course. He fought the battle he says. But there was a problem with Peter. Peter continued in the same way. Peter looked at Christ. Walked on the water. Had a great faith. And suddenly he saw the storms raising high. He saw the storms coming against him. He looked at the side now. Even when Christ was right near him. He began to look at the side. And when he began to look at the side, he forgot how big God was standing in front of him. All that he could focus was how big problem was next to him. He was just focusing upon the big problems that will drown him and sink him and destroy him. He forgot the God that is before him is bigger than anything. And when he began to focus and look around, Peter got drowned. There was a famine even in the water. There was a famine in the water when your focus is gone away from God. There's a famine. Is there a famine in your spiritual life? I can walk with my Bible this morning, but if the and I can hold my Bible this morning, but if my Bible is not holding me, I have a famine in my life. If the Bible is not holding me, I have a famine in my life. If the Bible is not holding your family, there is a famine in your family. And if the Bible is not holding the church together, there is a famine in the church. And there is a famine in the nation. What we need together today is not a good government. What we need today in this world is a good church. The government will not change the world. The church can change the world. It is the church that will change the world. My dear friends, the Bible says here in the book of Amos chapter 8, verse number 11. Behold, the days come, says the Lord God, that I will send a famine in the land. Not a famine of bread, nor a thirst for water. It's not about food and drink. Perhaps the provision and the supply for food will be more. That's what happened in the book of Revelation. They thought they are rich. Their clothes were rich. The food was rich. But Jesus looked at them and said, You are poor and naked. Dear friend, there was a famine in the churches. I would like to consider there's a famine in our church today. As a pastor, it doesn't comfort me to think in that way. But as a growing Christian together with you, I would love to consider there is a famine in our church. If we would all move towards Christ now, considering taking for granted, there is a famine in the church. Hence, let me go and hold on to that living water which will Destroy that famine. Which will make us like this morning brother said. To be fruitful you need to be connected to Christ. You cannot bear fruit without Christ in your life. In fact Jesus says in John chapter 15. You can do nothing without me. Amen. Amen. You can do nothing without me. Oh you can make a big numbers. You can make the church to look beautiful. But that is not about Christ. 
Just because of a big number does not mean God is there. When Sachin Nenulkar bats, millions of people come to watch. Doesn't mean that is from God. It just means entertainment. And when churches begin to entertain the people, you can have numbers together with the famine. But God is not present there. That is the problem with the people of Israel. Every time the materialistic gathered and, and, and the material life uh, was more and they began to prosper materially, spiritually they began to die. Spiritually they began to be dry, dried up bones. Time and time over and over again, we need the breath of God in a fresh way every day. We need to long for the Holy Ghost to be upon us, to control our life. We need to long for an anointing of the Holy Spirit. We need to long for another Pentecost every day in our life. Dear friends, the most dangerous and the most scary part here is, God is the one who is taking initiative to send the famine. You don't want to be in that place, right? God sending the famine. God is the one sending the famine in the church. God is the one who is sending the famine in the family. God is the one who is sending the famine in the nation. Why? Because people have chosen to reject the knowledge of God. God says, here it is, here it is, here it is. People said, give us some entertainment. Give us some more material blessings. And the focus is all now about how I can bring it up and pile it up. Look at that verse 11. That's dangerous. Behold, the days come, saith the Lord God. That I, I will send a famine in the land. I will send a famine in the land, not a famine of bread, nor of thirst for water, but of hearing the words of the Lord. The words of the Lord is not a prosperity gospel, dear friend. The words of the Lord is not about signs, wonders and miracles. The words of the Lord is not about all this entertainment and false light in churches today. And you may be thinking, look at the numbers of churches that's growing. Look at the numbers of people that are coming. That's not the word of God. God is not into prosperity gospel. Prosperity gospel is from the pit of hell. God is not into it. If you study the lives of the people, the nation of Israel, every time prosperity came, they went down spiritually. It is the same thing with the church today. Read about the churches in the book of Revelation. When riches came, they went below. They went down. They began to look about how they can pile up more. I will... Send a famine, not of bread, nor of thirst, but of the hearing of the word of God. How many of us love to hear the word of God? We don't want faith, we want sight. Faith cometh by hearing, and hearing by the word of God. Sight comes by looking about the signs. And Jesus said, Wicked and adulterous generation seeketh after signs and wonders. I didn't say that Jesus said. And if Jesus said, praise the Lord, we will go for the faith. Amen? Amen. Our faith will be tested, dear friend. Your faith will be tested today. Your faith will be tested next week. Your faith will be tested until you are raptured or until you go to the grave. Beware. Be alert. Be committed. Be watchful. It's coming. It's coming. The boat will look as if it's going to be drowning. What will you do? 
when the storms hit hard it is god who is going to send this test it is god who sends the famine it's the god who sends the famine not of bread not of thirst everyone will have more and more and more of food and clothing and shelter and every comforts of life while the spiritual thing will be seen dried up valley this is a scary part that's a scary thing god says i will send a famine he said he it defines god defines the type of that famine and the type of the famine is hearing the words of the lord people don't want today the word of god what happened bro i slept long what happened bro it's all about me and myself self exaltation today look at the books in the christian store the power of i am seven ways how to be happy Eight points: How to become rich, written by Christian preachers and so-called prophets. It's all about me and I. That's the generation, so-called Christianity, that we are watching today in churches. Paul was not about that. Paul says, "I determined to know nothing." he was not interested what is cooking in your home he was not interested what is the problem that is going through he was not interested about the gossips around all that he was interested was christ when focus is christ then your relationship is right when the focus is about what is the problem with this family and that family and this preacher and that preacher you are the one who will be going through famine because now what is happening is you don't want to hear the word of god you want to hear this and that famine in the land famine in the church famine in the family famine in me and famine in you sent by god now this is written for our knowing this is written for our learning This is written for admonition that we don't do that way but rather rise up and stay in faith and walk in faith and look in faith and looking unto Jesus the author and finisher of our faith. Why the words of God? Why? Why not something else? Why not the music? Why not the dancing? why not the why not the lighting why not some entertainment in the church why the famine of the word of god why because god knows there'll be lack of sound doctrines in this day god told paul to write it down there's a day that's going to come in the church where there'll be famine in the church today and god said there'll be famine because people don't need sound doctrine oh pastor you preach that it's offensive i don't want to be here okay help yourself there's many out there who can welcome you with wide open arms so you can be just like the world church will not make you church ought not to make you like the world church ought to make you to walk with christ to be more like jesus christ amen, amen. if worldliness is what satisfies then go back to the world lack of sound doctrine come with me to uh, uh, second timothy chapter 4 <clears throat> second timothy chapter 4 Second Timothy chapter 4 verse number verse number 3 and 4 uh, let me read two also oh unto every preacher that would not heed to the exhortation and to the charge of this scripture oh unto every preacher that will take people of god towards the root of famine and not towards the path of Christ the bible tells every man every woman preach the word you may say pastor but ladies are not allowed to preach 
Yeah, but you can preach to the women. You can preach to your children. You can train them up. Preach the word, preacher. Father, preach the word. Husband, preach the word. Son, preach the word. Mother, preach the word. Daughter, preach the word. Preach the word. Be instant, in season, out of season. Reprove. Oh boy. We don't like that. But God puts that first. Just, just talk to me some sweet things. I'll be happy, pastor. I'll be here. I'll give more offering to you if you just speak to my ears. I'll be there every Sunday if you just don't preach about me, but preach about anybody else, but not about me. I'll be there. <laughs> you better go out to the world. Preach the word. Be instant in season. Out of season. Reprove. Rebuke. Oh, that is more painful. <laughs> I'm not here this morning come to church to be rebuked. I just love some smooth prophecy. No, buddy. If you love Christ, you will love the word of God. If you love Christ, you will love to be chastened. If you love God, you will love to be charged. You will love to be corrected and to be rebuked and to be reproved. That's a famine in the church. It's all about I. How wonderful you are this morning. How super spiritual Christian you are this morning. Go back home. Be just as you came. Doesn't that sound good? Oh yeah. Any time of the life. Make me feel good. But God is not in such preachings. God says, I want my children to be totally committed to my cause. I got a call yesterday from Israel. He said, brother, I'm so old and I want to, I just want to study God's word. Am I, can God use me? And I said, brother, there's never a time where you'll be too old to be used by God. You can be used even when you're 70 years old. Amen. That's a hope, man. God can use anybody. I know about men and women of God who are even 50s and 60s and they totally surrendered their life to the cause of Christ and God just picked them up and used them to do monumental work for the cause of Christ. There's one condition. You may be 70, you may be 90, you may be 50, 60, whatever age you are. Here it is. Listen carefully. The world is yet to see what God can do with my, one man, one woman, one child who is totally committed for the cause of Christ. It's not the age, it's the commitment. You commit yourself totally to the cause of Christ, He'll pick you up and take you to a height where you never dreamt in your wildest dream. Amen? The world is yet to see what God can do with one man who is totally committed for the cause of Christ. Will you be? Every time I hear this, I want to be. I say, Lord, I want to be that man. I want to be that one man who is totally committed to the cause of Christ. Maybe everybody can say that and God can use each one of us. Amen? Dear friends, there's a lack of sound doctrine. The Bible says, preach the word, be instant in season, out of season. Reprove, rebuke, exhort with all long suffering and doctrine. If you read the pastoral epistle, 13 times the word doctrine is used. God thinks it's important. Doctrine means teachings. Teachings of the Bible for the church, for your spiritual life, for my spiritual life. It says why it is important to preach the doctrine. Why it is important to rebuke and rebu uh, 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 reprove and, and to exhort. Why? The Bible says for the time will come. For the time will come when they will not endure sound doctrine. That is what famine is. 
That is what famine is. Look at, open your eyes and open your ears and look around in so-called churches around the world today. There's famine of hearing the word of God. The word of God is not preached. Philosophy and psychology is preached today. How to be rich. How to do this. How to do that. For the time will come when they will not endure sound doctrine. But after their own lusts. Lust of the eyes. Lust of the flesh. Pride of life. Shall they heap to themselves. Teachers. Hey. Pastor Lawson, you are not a good preacher. You offend me always. I am going to use a sissified fellow who will listen to me and preach for me. I would rather preach you, preach at you and for you. And by the grace of God, bring you out of every borders of famine. And also be hated by you. Than to make you love me. For the false and sissified preaching that I would preach. I do not need such love. Every man ought to think that way. Every husband need to be thinking that way. I want to preach the truth. And you ought to love the preacher for the truth. Amen. Amen. Not for some kind of things that will tickle you yours. They shall turn away their years from the truth. And shall be turned unto fables. Mm -hmm. But watch thou in all things. Endure afflictions. Man, preacher boys, ladies, if you're going to be standing for the truth, you will endure, you ought to endure afflictions. Amen. Nothing, no good things comes without afflictions. The gold will not shine, the silver will not shine until it goes seven times into the fire. Amen. Afflictions will come. That's the famine. No doctrines. There's no endure of sound doctrines. They'll turn away their ears from the truth. That is the words of God. That is the famine. Secondly, we find departure from the faith. Departure from the faith. First Timothy chapter 4 verse number 1. First Timothy chapter 4 verse number 1. Now the Spirit, the Holy Spirit, now the Spirit speaketh expressly that in the latter times some shall depart from the faith giving heed to seducing spirits and doctrines of devils speaking lies in hypocrisy Having their conscience seared with a hot iron. No fear of God. No love for God. No growth in faith. We need lies. Lies in hypocrisy, God's word says. Heeding to the seducing spirits and doctrines of devils. This is famine in the church, my beloveds. This is famine in the church. At least when I see this, I'm comforted to know this, that there is no famine in the church here because I preach the truth and God is my witness. And when there is a cleansing, it is because the weeds have been cleaned out. Amen? Amen. The weeds ought to be cleaned out so the plants may get proper nutrition. Thirdly, it is a love for deception. Allowed to be deceived. Isaiah chapter 30 verse number 10. Isaiah chapter 30 verse number 10. There's a famine in the church. As much as I love to know that there is no famine in the church, I would still keep a little void just to stand on the border and say, there could be a famine in our church that can keep us going for the Lord. Amen? Let's not reach to a place where we say, I've reached it. I've attained it. I've got it all right. 
No, 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 no. I'm still learning. I'm still getting there. I'm st- and the Lord is still walk- working on us. Amen? Amen? Isaiah chapter 30. Isaiah chapter 30. Verse number 10. <laughs> 9 says that this is a rebellious people. Lying children, children that will not hear the law of the Lord. If I say with brother Lordson, he's going to make my life miserable because he's going to expose me through the preaching. So I stay away. Okay. Help yourself. We say to the shears. Shears means prophets. The King James Bible is beautiful. You don't even need an Oxford dictionary. It has an inbuilt dictionary. The word is explained right in that same verse. Or in the verse above or the below. Or in the same chapter. If you just take a little bit of hard work. What is shears? Shears means prophets. In the olden times, prophets were known as shears. Okay? We say to the shears, see not unto, uh, see not and to the prophets, prophesy not unto us right things. Speak unto us smooth things, prophesy deceits. Get you out of the way, turn aside out of the path, cause the Holy One of Israel to cease from before us. Oh boy. People don't want. We're living in the same kind of days and age where people want deception. People love deception. What do you love today? What is your love today? Where is your heart fixed today? Where is your eyes looking at today? That's the famine in the land. That's the famine in the church. Love for deception. Departure from the faith. Lack of sound doctrines. It's not about food. Everybody has food in our church. Everybody has water. Everybody has clothing. Everybody is comfortable. It's not about food, clothing and shelter today. The famine is of the hearing of the word of God. You will be tested over and over and over again. I will be tested over and over and over, over again. True love ought to be tested. The love of the Son of God was tested on the cross. And he proved his love by giving himself on the cross, by shedding his precious blood, dying for us. The Bible says he endured the cross. Such was great contradiction that he endured the cross for the joy that was set before us. Before him. He saw the salvation of the world. Through his death and shed blood. And resurrection. And because of the joy that was set before him. He endured the cross the Bible says. Dear friends. If the sun sets today. It will rise up tomorrow morning. Think about the rising sun. The joy that is set before you. The crown that awaits you. Think about it. Focus upon Christ. The one who went before you setting an example and becoming an ensample. God describes the conditions. What kind of condition it will be of a famine in a church. He describes the, he he takes the initiative, he defines the type and and he describes the condition now. What is the condition? Revelation chapter 3. Revelation chapter 3, verse number 15 and 16. Let's look at verse number 14 also. And unto the angel of the church of the lavidation write... These things said the Amen. The faithful. The word Amen is another name for Jesus. You understand? It's good to say Amen. Amen? Yes. Yeah. Amen. The faithful 
and true witness. The beginning of the creation of God. I know thy works. That thou art neither cold nor hot. You know what Jesus is saying? Be hot and be your or get out and be cold. You see, he doesn't want 50-50 in our life. He said, hey, you either be on my side or go and get on the side of the devil. Cold. Hot is me. Cold is the devil, Jesus says. He wants you to be hot for him. I mean, totally kindred all the time. Start up all the time. Flaming the fire all the time that is in you. Always zealous. Always passionate about Jesus Christ. That's what he's expecting from you and me. He's not expecting a cold systems of life. We are very, we have become so much like, ah, oh, it's Sunday, man. Okay, a little bit extra. We are becoming cold, dear friends. We are becoming cold. We are more faithful to the mammon than for the Lord Jesus Christ. It's about church. The condition of famine in the church. He says, I know thy works, that thou art neither cold nor hot. I would that thou wert cold or hot. He says, see, I don't want you to be in the middle. Either be cold and get out, or be hot and stay and fight the battle. Amen? Amen. That's what Christ is saying. He wants you to be passionate just as He is passionate about you. So then, because thou art lukewarm, and neither cold nor hot, I will spew thee out of my mouth. Yuck! I don't like the way that you live a Christian life. You are Christian on Sunday, Monday you are an atheist. That's what Jesus says. You are something in the church and something else outside the church. He says, hey, can you be the same? Just as you are on the Sunday morning, can you be the same in the home and in the street? Or just like be in the street as you are? It's serious. And such preachings are needed today to just wake us up again. Amen? So famine may not visit you and me in my spiritual, your spiritual, in your family, in your church, and in your neighborhood. Because thou sayest, I am rich and increased with goods and have need of nothing. And knowest not that thou art wretched and miserable and poor and blind and naked. That's what prosperity says. Look at all the blessings that God gave me. I have five cars now. I have this, that. It's God's blessing. Or maybe or it could be a judgment of God on you. You never know. It's not wrong to be rich. It's wrong to be rich materially and not be rich in Christ. It's okay if you are rich materially and rich in Christ. Amen? Amen. There's nothing wrong in being rich. God makes you rich so you can be for Him. We need rich people in Christ, in Christ, in the body of Christ today. It's because of a lot of rich people in the body of Christ today, where the mission work goes on. Think about Colgate. The company Colgate belongs to a Christian. When he started his work, he was working for some company. And then he said, why not I start something? And he, he began to use this toothpaste in the before. And then he would fold them in a paper and sell it in the house to house. And with the money he got, he gave 10% to the church. Uh, and, and then kept the 90%. And he began, now nah, nah, I'm not trying to manipulate, please. Okay, don't you ever think I'm trying to manipulate and get to your pocket. That's not my intention. My intention is to show, show you what called it happened. And what happened is, slowly he began to learn how to make a toothpaste. He made a toothpaste, made a tube, put the toothpaste inside the tube, went house to house and sold it. 
He began to become rich. And then he started a small kind of small scale business. You know what he did? He began to be faithful. He began, as the Lord made him rich, he began to give it to world mission through the church. Today, Colgate still gives 90% of its profit to the mission work and keeps the 10% to the company and does the work. And Colgate is one of the largest company in the world today. (whistles) Test and see. You test me and prove me, God says, if I will not open up the windows of heaven. What am I trying to say? It's okay to be rich, I'm trying to say. I'm not saying it's wrong to be rich. I'm not saying it's, it's a sin to be rich. Not at all. But don't you ever think gain is godliness. But be sure godliness with contentment is great gain. Amen? Palm olive, Colgate. Hmm. Faithfulness. But the problem here, they were rich materially, but not in Christ. I counsel thee to buy of me gold right in the fire. That thou mayest be rich and white raiment. That thou mayest be clothed and that the shame of thy nakedness do not appear. And anoint thine eyes with eye slave that thou mayest see. Hey, this is this. This is the heart of this chapter. As many as I love. I rebuke. O unto a preacher that will not rebuke the false from the pulpit. O unto a preacher that will not chasten from the pulpit. As many as I love, I rebuke and chasten. Be jealous therefore and repent. Behold, I stand at the door and knock. If any man hear my voice and open the door, I will come in to him and will serve with him and he with me. To him that overcometh will I grant to sit with me in my throne. Even as I also overcame and sat and am sat down with my father in his throne. He that has an ear, let him hear what the Spirit saith unto the churches. God never finishes a chapter without comfort. Amen. What a heart of God. He speaks about all these things and then he says, hey, there is a hope for you. If you will open your heart and allow me to do the work what I want to do, I will make your life beautiful. He will never leave you comfortless. He will never forsake. He said, even if your father or your mother will forsake, I will never forsake you. What a heart of God. How wonderful the love of God is. He rebukes, he chastens because he loves us. Oh, let us be obedient to such. Now, dear friends, God's expectation is there. God has some expectation from you. Shall we see what is God's expectation with before we finish? Turn with me to First Timothy chapter 4. God's expectation from you. First Timothy chapter 4. This is how the Lord says you can stay away from the famine in your home, in your family, in your church, and in your spiritual life. You and I don't want famine, spiritually or materially. No, no, no. We want riches spiritually. Amen? Let's be a rich Christian spiritually. Let's enjoy prosperity spiritually. Let us grow. This is how it is. This is what will keep famine out of your life. This is what will keep famine out of your church. This is what will keep you famine, keep famine from your life. First Timothy chapter 4, verse number 12 through 16. Let no man despise thy youth. I know this is written to Timothy as a pastor and Paul is saying, Hey, Timothy, I want you to do this. You'll be fine. Yes, as we began by saying, it is written to an individual, but it is written for all of us here. Amen? Amen. Let no man despise thy youth, but be thou an example of the believers 
in word, in conversation, in charity, in spirit, in faith, in purity. Till I come, give attendance to reading, to exhortation, to doctrine. Neglect not the gift that is in thee. Hey, listen here. Everybody has a gift in you. Everybody has a gift. You will never know that gift until and unless you yourself get involved in the work of the Lord. And when you get involved and be active in the work of the Lord through the church, people will recognize what you have. And they themselves will begin to tell you, Hey, you're doing this, man. You, this is great. Sister, this is fantastic. You can, you'll be able to recognize because of the zeal that pushes you to do something. I remember when I got saved, you know what was my days? I would be, the church will start at 9 o'clock. I'll be there at 8 o'clock and try to clean the church. It was not mine. I was not the boss. I just got saved. I was there arranging the chairs, getting the books, hymn books and putting them in the chairs and arranging the mic system. And then after the service, I just loved it. I wanted to do it. And then I went to the Bible college. I did the same thing in the Bible college. I was the first one to open the doors of the church. I had the keys. It was not a job that was given to me. I grabbed it. Because it was my passion. The house of the Lord was my passion. I was there arranging the chairs. I was there arranging the mics. Putting the hymn books. Sweeping in on Saturday. Cleaning it up. I did it. For four years. My passion. No one told me to do it. I saw my gift. I do the same thing now. And God began to show me my gift. As a preacher. No man is called to preach. If you cannot bow down and pick up the paper from the floor. Do you understand that? One guy called me up and said, Pastor, I don't win, want to be one among everybody. I want to be the man. I said, get out of here. You want prominency. You're not called to be a minister of God if you want prominency and not want to be a servant. Christ came to be to serve, not to be served. Amen? Bow down and pick up the paper first. That's the sign of a preacher first. Amen? Be an example. Give attendance to the reading. To exhortation, to doctrines. Study. Try to learn. Neglect not the gift that is in thee, which was given thee by prophecy, with the laying on of the hands of the presbytery. Ordination. Meditate upon these things. Give thyself wholly to them. That thy profiting may appear to all. Everybody will recognize dear friends. The gift that is in thee. Don't be a spectator. Being a spectator will only invite famine in your life. Get involved. Row the boat. Rock the boat. Row the boat. He who rows the boat will not rock the boat. Get involved. You may not be ro rowing and you may not even look like rocking but behind the scene you might be. Row the boat. He who rows the boat will not rock the boat. Amen? He who rows the boat will not rock the boat. Think about it for a moment. Meditate upon these things. Give thyself wholly to them that thy profiting may appear to all. Give yourself completely for the people of God. Be sacrificial. Be every time available for the cause of Christ. Remember, God will have the power of God upon you. But if you will not be hearing it, God will take it away from you and give it to somebody else who is more faithful than you. You understand that? Morning brother reminded us, God will take us out. Chop us out. If we are not fruitful. He'll put it away. 
And it's true. Take heed unto thyself and unto the doctrine. Continue in them. For in doing this, thou shalt both save thyself. Save from what? It's not about salvation. Save yourself from having famine in your life and in your church. Dried up Christian life. Save yourself from apostasy. Save yourself from famine. Take, thy, take heed unto thyself and unto the doctrine. Continue in them. For in doing these, thou shalt, save, thou shalt both save thyself. They are already saved. Salvation they have already attained. But here is apostasy is speaking about. Save yourself from apostasy. Save yourself from famine. The preacher and the hearer. Both will be saved from such apostasy. Thou shalt both save thyself and them that hear thee. That is God's expectation. He wants you to continue, not stop. Continue in the word of God. He wants you and I to be an example. He wants us to give, he wants us to give attendance to the reading, exhortation of the word of God. He wants us not to neglect the gift that is in you. You may be a good administrator, you may be a good, uh, a good preacher, maybe a good singer, maybe a music, may, whatever, maybe a good, uh, whatever. You know, you know, you know it, who you are. Get out of your comfort zone, get involved. Save yourself from apostasy and famine. Give thyself wholly, completely, give it. Hey, you don't belong to yourself, you belong to Christ. Memorize the scripture, I beseech you, therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, that you present your say, your bodies as a living sacrifice. Your bodies. Holy unto God. This is your reasonable service. Be not confirmed to this world, but be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind. This is the perfect will of God, the Bible says. So take heed, take heed unto the doctrines. There's a famine in the churches today. You don't want famine in this church. Do you? No, I don't want. You don't want famine in your family. You don't want famine in your personal life. You better get right with God. You better take heed to the word of God. Continue in them. Amen. Amen. You will save yourself and your family from apostasy and famine. What a wonderful message from the Bible. That is God's word. Amen. Amen. Shall we pray? Father God, we thank you. It's a scary subject to look upon. Famine in our church? Apostasy in our church? Far be it, O God, as we come closer to you. As we draw closer and closer in Christ Jesus. Fill us with thy Holy Spirit and power. O God of heaven, we beg you. We beg you, O God. That thou will cleanse us and, and purify us and help us, O oh God, to just totally commit ourselves to you, O oh God. Help us not to be a 50-50 Christian, but a 100% Christian, O oh Master. I pray that every individual over here will go home with a heart full of gratitude and thanksgiving. A heart stirred up for the love of God. The flame that has been f fanned. And stirred and, be, and kindled to live for the Lord. O oh God of heaven, we pray that thou will just pat us and push us and hold us and lead us and guide us. Please help us, O oh God, to be away from apostasy and famine in our family and church and individual life. May we prosper spiritually. May we... See your smile upon 
us, O oh God. Thank you, Lord, for thy word that is sharper as sword, that comes deep into our hearts, even through the marrows of bones. And, and O oh Lord, ascender of our souls, we thank you for everything. May we grow to be a passionate Christian. We give you all the glory and honor. We give you the praise. In the sweetest name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, we pray. Amen. Shall we all stand?